I think these are the realities of the region. Uh, in the 1960s, it's not that the region was completely in a coherent strategic state because the, the Cold War was in progress and there was a line through the region. I mean, North Vietnam was communist, uh, Laos was royalist, but with a very Pathet Lao insurgency making considerable progress. The other countries uh, dealing with insurgencies, communist insurgencies. And ASEAN was a smaller grouping, five at that time, later on six, and it was able to come together sufficiently in order to deal with that situation. And we dealt with it in the Cambodia war, and I think that brought the five plus one closer together. Now, we are not having a Cold War, but you have different powers in the world, and uh, some countries in ASEAN are closer to China, closer geographically, close, closer in their strategic perspectives. Other countries are more omnidirectional in their approach, and therefore there is a gradient within the ASEAN countries, the 10, in their attitudes towards the great powers in where they line up when issues come up, which are of close concern to one or the other of the great powers. And we have to now deal with it within ASEAN rather than to say, here is five of us trying to deal with it and the others are outside the pale. So if you ask me whether it's better to deal with it within ASEAN, with the 10 and the difficulties, or whether it were better if we had stayed five and then we would have an easier time reaching consensus with only five, I think on the whole it's better that we have 10 rather than that we have five. Whether you should have more than 10, that's another matter. and You have to balance it very carefully. But I, I, I think taking the long view, it was the right thing to do to have ASEAN this shape because it covers the right footprint and the right countries which do need to work together. And when it comes to South China Sea or something like that, that's one of the sharpest areas where different perspectives will make it hard for us to go as far as we'd like in terms of developing a consensus. But there are many other areas where we can work together. And just as in the first phase of our, of our existence, uh, ASEAN didn't pay much attention to, political, uh, to economic cooperation because there was just no, no basis for consensus on that. Now, perhaps we have to pay more emphasis to economic cooperation and come together more closely in those fields. PM, at the level of the leaders, is there a continuing consensus that the ASEAN policy is to be close to all the major powers, but not to be aligned with any of them? I don't know that we uh, uh, read a credo every time we have lunch together. <laughs> but I think that is the ethos of our meetings, and I think that's the basis on which our officials operate. I mean, we, we all of us are in the global scheme not huge countries. I mean, you, are, you, are, you, you count for something. If you make a relevant point, you count for something. If something urgent happens in your part of the world and people want to know what's up. But honestly speaking, determining the flow of history, we try very hard to push in the right direction, knowing that that's just one contribution to the tide. And therefore, we have to work together as ASEAN.